Hello folks! Today I will try a different approach and will review only one article, but will do it more thoroughly and add my two cents. So the article is about MongoDB comparison with DynamoDB. The author is pondering about what are the advantages and disadvantages of both. What should be mentioned at the start is that the idea behind them is completely different. For DynamoDB it's a key value storage, somehow closer to Redis but with different set of features. And for MongoDB it's uh, just document oriented store, so they both are NoSQL but different approaches. What does it mean? For DynamoDB it means that you can just have one field to search for. Okay, sure, not just one field, you may have a second field. And uh, you will have compounded indexes for these two fields. First one is primary key, second one is search key. And it is needed because DynamoDB uses your primary key for sharding, and inside these shards it uses search key to search for your, uh, for your item. MongoDB on the opposite side is much more flexible. You may have, you may search for any field you want. You may have plenty of indexes on different fields, different type of indexes. You can combine your indexes, make compounded indexes. You can read more about about indexes. I'm saying this at the fifth, sixth, sixth time in this sentence uh, in the article in show notes. I wrote a blog post about it recently. The second thing to mention is the way how you set it up. DynamoDB is proprietary database made by AWS, Amazon Web Services, so you can set it up almost instantly. Literally, you can just spend half an hour reading about it. But for setting it up you need a couple minutes, or you can just follow the tutorial I wrote a couple of months ago and uh, yeah, do this step by step with me. And after these basic steps you will have your DynamoDB database not just set up but ready to product ready for production, ready to scale. And by this easiness and uh, being ready to scale I mean actually that you just need to specify a couple of options like select your primary key if you want, um, search key, write capacity, read capacity, and that's basically it. A couple of more options for sure, but yeah, the idea is, is it, that it should be very easy for developers to start working with. For MongoDB, you have much more things to care about and to configure, but it's still really easy to install as any database, but if you want to go to production, for sure you better to spend some time reading the, the documentation, but this issue can be solved by multiple third-party providers, for example, MLab. Next point is pricing. For DynamoDB you can start from zero or very low pricing. However, as usual, for AWS services your price is quite flexible and based on your capacity. And it's not always easy to plan I mean, when you're starting your application. For MongoDB, it again depends on your configuration. If you run it on your own machine, it will be one price, you just pay for your VPC or dedicated server. If you run it on AWS, it will be price for AWS. If you run it on, for example, MLab, they have different options. They also have free option, but it's about half a gigabyte for database. Uh, that's, not, that's not enough for production database for sure. However, their pricing models are completely different, so when you will be searching for the database, when you will be, when you will be considering picking one or another, it's better to spend some time doing calculations. And the last thing I want to mention is scalability and performance adjustments. You should have no doubts, both solutions are no scale and both are made to be scalable and performance adjustable. Just one thing to keep in mind, that for DynamoDB the only thing you should care, the only aspect you should care about is the pricing mostly, and the queries you build for sure. But for MongoDB if you want it to scale, 
you have to manage it more or less manually. It again depends on your configuration. You still can use third party providers, which will give you this possibility out of the box. But in most cases, you will need to set up your additional shards or additional replicas. And as a conclusion, Autor gives us his opinion that both solutions are great, are viable, are ready to use. They just both have their pros and cons. For DynamoDB you can start from zilch price, for MongoDB you will probably will start paying earlier. Also for AWS DynamoDB you won't need any configuration, I mean you need to spend very tiny amount of your time reading about configuration and writing configuration. But on the opposite side for MongoDB you can have you can do much more fine-tuning. I completely agree with this opinion. Both solutions are great. I used both of them in production. But just one thing to keep in mind. When you will be deciding which one to pick, be consistent in your choice because it could be really complicated to switch from one to another because one of them is document-oriented, another is key value storage, even if it's comprehensive key value storage. All the best for you, don't forget to learn something new every day and if you will subscribe to my channel you will receive portion of new information, portion of new brilliant articles or book or podcast or whatever every single day, at least I try to do this every single day. So, see you, all the best.